Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem one from the Code Chef Junlong challenge entitled Naive Chef. The problem states, once after a stressful day, Chef decided to relax and visit a casino near his house to gamble. He feels lucky and he's going to bet almost all of his money. The game Chef is going to play in the casino consists of tossing a die with n faces twice. There is a number written on each face of the die. These numbers are not necessarily distinct. In order to win, Chef must get the number A on the first toss and the number B on the second toss of the die. The excited viewers want to know the probability that Chef can win the game. Can you help them find that number? Assume that Chef gets each face of the die with the same probability on each toss and that tosses are mutually independent. And note that the number of test cases we're going to be given is between 1 and 70. Uh, the number of faces on the die is going to be between 1 and 104. And A and B will be obviously between 1 and N and each of the uh, faces are going to be between 1 and N as well. So let's take a look at the examples that Code Chef provided us with. So here is our example input and our example output. So note that the first number here just represents T, the number of test cases, and then each test case consists of two lines. Uh, the first line consists N, A, and B. So this is the number of faces on the die, and A is the number we want to get on our first roll, and B is the number we want to get on our second roll. And then the second line in our test case just consists of the values on each one of the faces of our die. Uh, so we have two test cases here, and for the first one we should output one, and for the second second uh, example we should output 0 0.25 and note the question states that we need to have uh, accuracy within 10 to the negative 6. So this is a pretty simple problem it's basic probability uh, taking a look at our first example we have n equal to 5 a and b equal to 1 and then all of the faces are equal to 1 so the way we're going to solve this problem is just by uh, keeping track of the number of a's and b's uh, on our faces of our die and then uh, the probability of getting A on roll 1 and B on roll 2 is just going to be the count of uh, the number of faces with A divided by N so that's the probability of rolling an A and then the count of the number of faces with B on it over N so that's the probability of rolling a B. so the probability of getting A on 1 and B on 2 is just going to be the probability of rolling an A versus uh, multiplied by the probability of rolling a B. Uh, so for this example it's going to be uh, really trivial because every single face is 5 we're just gonna have 5 over 5 times 5 over 5 is equal to 1 for our second example it's also quite trivial we have n equal to 2 uh, which is a two face die which isn't really possible so I guess this is some sort of piece of paper that you just throw up in the air and a is equal to 1 B is equal to 2 and each of those values only shows up once so we're just gonna have 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 is equal to 0 0.25 and here's the third example that I'm just adding because it's a little less trivial so here we have n equal to 6 so a regular six face die, uh, a equal to one, b equal to four, but the faces are a little bit different than a regular die. So we have one, two, three, four, but then two extra four, so no five and six. So the probability we're gonna get here is one over six for rolling a number one, and three out of six, or one over two, uh, for rolling a four. And this is gonna end up one over 12, which is equal to 0 0.08333. So this is the algorithm we're gonna use, and I'm gonna cover three different solutions. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward problem, but this is just gonna highlight some different techniques you can use to solve this problem and then also sort of analyze which I consider to be the best uh, to use in a competitive programming setting versus an interview setting. Uh, so our first uh, solution, solution one, is going to use a hash map. So the first uh, three lines of code or four lines of code are going to be the same for each solution. You're just reading in the number of test cases t. You have a while loop uh, while t is not equal to zero and uh, we declare our int a n, a, and b, and we read these in, and then we uh, declare a hash map. So we're going to have the key as an int, which is the value of the face, and then a double for the number of times that this uh, face value occurs. And we're keeping it as a double so that we can uh, have a uh, floating point number for our results when we do this equation down here. So then all we're going to do is we're going to have a simple for loop from 0 to n, or n minus 1. We're going to read in each value on our face and then we are going to use the bracket operators to either insert uh, a, and do a plus uh, plus, so a post increment, uh, or if the value already exists we're going to retrieve that and add one to it. So if the value doesn't exist it's going to uh, add it, it's going to do an insertion and then add one to it, uh, but if it does exist it'll retrieve the value and then uh, add one to that value. So once we've done this we have basically 
basically a hash map with uh, a count of every single face. And so then all we have to do is output uh, using uh, the right precision uh, the uh, number of A's times the number of B's divided by N times N. So this is basically the count of A divided by N, which is the probability of getting an A, times the count of B over N, which is the probability of getting a B. Uh, so this is our first solution. Uh, the time complexity of this is going to be on average linear. So uh, an insertion or a lookup on a hash map on average is going to be uh, constant and we're doing this n times. So that's going to give us linear. Uh, some people will note that worst case it can be linear, which would end up giving us a, technically a worst case time complexity of O n squared. But in practice, in the test cases that they give us, we're not going to run into this. Uh, space complexity, which is something that I don't really talk about usually because uh, it's not important for the simpler problems in competitive programming. It only really becomes important for the uh, more sort of expert level problems. This is going to be linear as well because we are creating a data structure that is linear in the size of the input that we're getting. Uh, so this isn't great and we can do better than this in uh, solution two, which we're going to look at next. And the last thing we're going to look at across these solutions is character count. Uh, so this is something that you should never bring up in an interview. The number of characters uh, in your solution is not that important. Maybe the number of lines is because the, the shorter the code is, usually the more expressive and the more readable. Uh, but for competitive coding, the less you have the type, the faster you get the solution in and the higher your score. So this is uh, pretty important when you are competing in competitive coding contests. For solution two, it's the same idea once again the first three lines are the same uh, but instead of using a hash map to store our data we're not going to use any data structure we're just going to store two locals c and d which keep track of the number of a's and b's so we're simply going to uh, do the same for loop but uh, instead of storing our values we're just going to check is either one of them equal to a or b if so do a post increment on the respective c and d and once we have these values we can use the same equation to get the probability uh, that we're looking for. So the time complexity of this problem is also linear uh, because we have to loop over all the values once again. However, the space complexity is constant because uh, the amount of memory that we need to use is not proportional to our input. It's fixed uh, just with basically our integers and our doubles here. Uh, if we increase uh, n to be you know a thousand or a million, we, we don't have to uh, uh, use any more memory than for uh, 10 or 20. Uh, and last but not least, the character count for this is going to be slightly more at 337. Uh, so for our third solution, we're going to do something similar, but we're going to use an STL algorithm uh, called std count uh, in order to do the same thing. So uh, here we're going to store our values in a vector, uh, and we're going to have a slightly different for loop because we can use the uh, input uh, C in directly to the values uh, or elements of our vector. And then once we do this, we are just going to call a count. Uh, in the range of begin and end for our vector and then look for a and then multiply this by the count of uh, the same range for b and then uh, divide by n times n. So uh, time complexity for this is also linear. Space com com complexity once again is going to be linear because we have to store all the values again and the character count for this one is going to be uh, the highest of all of them, 354, because uh, we have to use the uh, begin and end methods on our data structure. Note that in C++ 20, we should be getting uh, ranges, which is going to simplify uh, the notation that we can use with uh, STL algorithms, but that's still a few years out before we have that. So sort of comparing all of the three solutions, which one is the best? We have uh, the first solution using our hash map, uh, time complexity, space complexity, both linear, and it has the smallest character count. Uh, number two, we're sort of hand rolling our own count. Uh, time complexity, also linear, but this results in a constant space complexity. It has a character count in the middle. And solution three, using the uh, std count STL algorithm. Uh, once again, time complexity and space complexity, both linear and the highest 
highest character count. For competitive programming, I would say that number one is the best, simply because it has the least characters. Uh, it doesn't matter that the time complexity and the space complexity on like combined is the worst of the three algorithms. Uh, as long as your time complexity and space complexity meet the requirements, uh, you should code whatever is the simplest algorithm and the fastest to code. Uh, in terms of being in an interview at a technical firm, uh, I would say, you know, mention all three of these. Uh, but if they ask, you know, what are the trade offs? What's the best one? At the end of the day, uh, probably solution two is the best because it has the best uh, space complexity and uh, the time complexity of each of the solutions are the same. And if you want to get into more detail, I would even say that. Uh, Solution number three is better than solution one because using a vector to store your values versus using a hash map, an unordered map, is better due to the fact that a vector stores its memory uh, contiguously, meaning next to each other in memory. Whereas an unordered map, each time you do an insertion, it's not necessarily going to be contiguous. Uh, and having your data stored contiguously in memory leads to better cache locality, which I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, which leads to faster code in general. Um, so I would sort of rank them in an interview number two, uh, number three, and then number one. But that being said, even though sort of the unordered map is the worst uh, algorithm, maybe in an interview, it's the best one for a competitive coding contest. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contest start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.